Hello, I'm Lily and in this video I like to discuss Newton's law of universal gravitation using FET simulation. We talk about force which is responsible for keeping a planet in orbit around the sun and the factors that affecting the magnitude of this force. As you can see here, we have two objects here, M1 and M2, and both of them have mass of 100 kilograms. And we want to measure the force they are applying on each other. As you can see, M1 applies a force, and let's put it on scientific notation, 4.17 times 10 to the power is minus 8 Newton on M2. And M2 applies same amount of force on M1. As you can see, the vectors, they are same size, but opposite direction. That is something that we expect according to Newton's third law, that two objects apply the same amount of force on each other, but in opposite direction. Right now, I want to change the mass of one of these objects. So I keep the mass of object one the same, that is 100 kilo. I double the mass of object two, and I also keep their distance the same. So it means that my independent variable is mass of object two, that I'm changing that. My dependent variable is something that I measure, that is force that these two objects apply on each other. My control variables are mass of object one and also distance between object one and two, that is in this case is four meter. So right now I double mass of object two and let's see what happens to the force that they are applying on each other. The amount of force now is 8.34 times 10 to the power of minus 8 Newton. So it means when I double mass of object 2, actually the amount of force also double. Right now I triple the amount of mass of object 2 to see what happens. So uh, initial one was 100 kilo. Right now I want to change it to 300. And as you can see, again, the amount of force also is triple. So as you can see here, mass of object one is the same, so it's my control variable. Distance also stays the same, so it's control variable, but mass of object two keep changing. So what's the conclusion? Can I say that the force that these two objects applying on each other actually is proportional to mass of object two? If I repeat this simulation, but this time uh, keep mass of object two constant and change mass of object one, we get same result. So it means we see if actually also is proportional to mass of object one. So, so far we can say the magnitude of force that these two objects applying on each other is proportional to M1 times M2. But let's see if there is any other factors affecting the magnitude of this force. Right now we studied mass of object, one and two, but let's look at the distance between these two objects and see if it affects the magnitude of force. So as we can see, when the distance between these two objects is two meter, the force they are applying on each other is 1.51 times 10 to the power of minus seven Newton. So I double the distance between them Okay, right now the distance between two objects is four meter and we see the amount of force acting on them is 4.17 times 10 to the power minus eight meter. And as we can see, the amount of force decrease. Let's triple the distance between these two objects and see what happens. Right now their distance is six meter and we see the amount of force again drop to 1.92 times 10 to the power minus 8 Newton. As we can see, by increasing the distance, the amount of force is decreasing. Okay, let's take a quick look here. 
You can see mass of object one and mass of object two both are constant, so they are our controlled variable. And arc, that is distance between two objects, keep changing. Here is double. Let's see what's happening to force. If I write R2 to R1, you need to see R2 to R1 is 4 divided by 2, or we can say 2 divided by 1. The ratio is 2 to 1. And we want to see what's the relationship between F2 and F1. F2 divided by F1, we divide the amount of force when the distance between two objects is 4 meter, divide by the amount of force when distance is 2 meter. And you see the result is 1 over 4. Between this one, number 3, and number 1, as you can see, R3 to R1 is 6 divided by 2, so the ratio is 3 to 1. And F3 to F1 is 1.85 times 10 to the powers minus 8. 1.67 10 to the powers minus 7 is equal 1 over 9. When we divide this two, we get 1 over 9. And for the fourth one, if we do the same thing, we see R4 to R1 is 4 to 1. And F4 to F1 is 1 to 16. Let's see if we can find a pattern between this. So R2 equal to R1, but F2 is one quarter of F1. Can you see any pattern here? Can you see a relationship between FR? Pause the video and think about it and see if you can write a relationship between F and R. Okay. If we look at this, we can say F is proportional to 1 over R squared. So far, we found F is proportional to M1 times M2. We found F is proportional to 1 over R squared. So we can say all together F is proportional to M1 times m2 divided by r squared. To make this proportional equal, we need to times it by constant number. G, I be sure it with g, I say f equal g m1 m2 r squared. So the gravitational force between two objects is equal, a constant number that later we talk about it, times m1 mass of object 1 times mass of object 2 divided by the squared of distance between two objects. Right now we want to see if we can use this data that we found to find the magnitude of g. Here I use the data that we got from calculation and I draw a graph. One graph is force versus distance between two objects and this is the shape of graph that I got. The other graph that I got is force versus distance between two objects squared. And this one, the last one is force versus inverse of the square of the distance between two objects. So this one is actually FR graph. This one is FR squared graph, but this one is one over R squared graph. So as you can see, the only graph that is linear is the last one. If you want to use one of these graphs to find the magnitude of G, definitely the last one is more helpful because the graph is linear, calculating the gradient is easier. So I start using this graph to find magnitude of G. Let's see how we can do it. As you know, gradient is rise over run. And in this case, right, if I make a triangle here, here is rise, that is delta F, 
and here is run that is delta actually one over r squared so i write it here delta f And just I substitute number using our graph. So it's equal to the amount of F here that is 1.67 times 10 to the power of minus 7 minus the amount of F here that is equal to 1.04 and Newton divide this is unit of force divided by one over meter squared that is equal to Newton meter squared. Okay, still is this one is not our G. How we can use this gradient to find the amount of G? I have to write the formula one more time here. Okay. As you know, gradient, as we said here, is delta F divided by delta 1 over R squared. I want to write F divided by 1 over R squared, something that we found here. And I want to write it in this way. F divided by 1 over R squared. And as you know, this one is equal F times R squared. In addition, here I can write it as F times R squared equal G M1 M2. If I mix these two equations, can I write gradient that is equal Actually, somehow F R squared is equal G M1 M2. Yes, I can. And then as a result, I can say G actually is equal to gradient divided by M1 times M2. In our simulation, M1 was 100 kilogram and M2 also was 100 kilogram. And we calculated our gradient here. So I want to use our gradient and the amount of M1 and M2 and find the G. So I substitute numbers here. And it's equal to that the unit is, we know gradient unit was Newton meter squared and M1 and M2 is kilogram. So I can say the unit is, I write it here, just not mixing with this, N, M, a squared divided by kilogram a squared. As you can see, the amount of G is really a small, so it explains why we can't feel the amount of force of attraction between a small object. Why you can't feel the force of at attraction between yourself and any other object around you. However, when one of the objects is massive like our Earth, then the amount of force is large enough that we can just feel it. It's like your weight. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.